Let's take a look at a different kind of control, the page control. The page control is a navigation control. It provides a series of dots that allow the user to select views or controls sequentially. I'll drag one onto the storyboard so you can almost see it. By default, the page control allows us to see three pages. They aren't necessarily pages per se. They're really just views. And in fact, the page control itself doesn't contain these views or pages. It just is an indicator of which one we're on. We'll give you a little color so that you can actually see it. So there's an attribute called tint color. And we'll do something like that. And now you can see a couple of the dots. And then a current page color. And we'll make that a lighter blue. And now you can see that leftmost dot is that lighter blue, indicating that we're on that first page or view. This is all the page control really is right here. Now we need some content for it to page through. So I'm going to add some image views. So this is a really common usage for this kind of control. I'm going to stack these up. Essentially divide them into thirds as best I can. And I also know this is not the size of the screen that I'm going to be showing you. So I'll change the size of the development environment view to 4.7, which is a little bit more realistic. And that's going to get me to shrink these image views a bit. I'd like to get that one to center. There we go. And we'll get our page view control to center. And there's a level of imperfection here with the, with the sizing and the centering that will allow for now. But we will put in some constraints. Okay. So I've got my image views. And I'm going to attach some images to them. And I need to add the images to the project. And we've got some technology images we're going to add. So we'll progress through a little bit of technology and we'll start with the telegraph for that first image. And a fax machine for the second image. And a computer for the third image. You can also see that we have some problems in terms of stretch draws and such, but we'll leave that for our UI image control mistake. But we'll leave that for our UI image control lesson. All we want is some images to work with at this point. And now we'd like to add some connections. So we're going to have an outlet for each one of these images.
clean that up a touch. And then the page control has a value changed action that we're interested in. Okay, and in that value changed, we'd like to know what page we're on. Excuse me for just a second. So depending on the page that we're on, we want to choose an image. So we'll look at the current page property of the page control. And that's our sender in this action and the current page. And if it's the first case, we want image one to be visible. I'm sorry, can't find the property I'm looking for. And we're back once again. So we'll set our hidden property. And for image one, we're going to say no to that. Or false. And image two. will hide it and image three will hide it. And now we need to repeat this kind of logic for the two other cases for each page. So for the second page, we want to hide image one and three and show image two. And for the final case, we'll hide images one and two and show image three. And we're also going to need a default case. And we'll make that the first case. Okay, finally, we've gotten there. So let's give it a run in the simulator. So right now, we have all three images shown. I should have set the initial properties for images two and three to be hidden. But when I use the page control, which can be a little bit tricky in the simulator, I'm sorry, this one's a little rough. Sorry about that. It's very tricky sometimes. Okay.
So as we work through the pages, we can see the page change and our images show and hide. Now it can be really tricky at times on the simulator to get the page change to actually happen. Don't get frustrated, just try it on real hardware. You'll be fine. So that's our page control.